What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So it has been about two, a little over two weeks since my accident. No, I'm not wearing my sling. I, I'm not trying not to wear it a whole lot right now because I like to be able to move my arm. If I hold it in one spot too long, it gets really tight, really knotted up, and honestly hurts worse. So I'm starting to get some movement out of my arm. You can see I can move it up quite a bit. So very happy with how I am feeling so far. I still do have some pain in my back from where my fractures are, but other than that, really not too bad. Feeling really good. So obviously we can't do the training today. Obviously it's gonna take a few more weeks if not longer to be able to get that tranny in. But there is something I wanted to talk about and kind of try to master in this video, and that is TIG welding. TIG welding aluminum to be specific. I have done a lot of stainless and I feel like I'm getting fairly decent. I'm not gonna say I'm really good, but I feel like I'm, I'm getting the hang of stainless. But every time I go to try to weld aluminum, it seems like I just have more problems than anything else. So this video might take two weeks to film. I'm not really sure. I kind of want to start from now and then kind of try to master it, try to figure it out. I'm going to do a little bit of welding every day and just see how good I can get at TIG welding aluminum. I really haven't messed around with it too much. So like I said, every time I try it, I just kind of have issues. Before we start welding, I kind of want to go over the equipment, the welders and everything I have. I get a lot, a lot of questions about everything I use. So this is an AHP TIG. Uh, it's called the Alpha TIG 201 XD. This is like eight, 900 bucks for the welder, everything that comes with the welder, the torch, the, the pedal, all that good stuff. I have upgraded some of it, but it's a very, very cheap welder. It's got a lot of adjustments as you can tell here. You can also weld, stick weld with it, which switch that button there to stick weld. That is TIG, you got AC, DC, 2T, 4T, you got straight, and then you got two different pulse settings. These are all pulse adjustments here. These are all amperage adjustments, and then you have post flow. That is the amount of time the gas flows out of the torch after you stop welding. Um, then you got AC balance and AC frequency for AC welding for aluminum. So I really haven't messed with these a lot, really. I just kind of found a baseline that works. And I just, whenever I weld, I just weld and I haven't really screwed with it. So I want to take some time, really figure this thing out. I did buy a new foot pedal, as you guys saw in a few videos ago, that Nova pedal there. I am still trying to get used to it. It's kind of actually taken a lot longer to get used to than I thought. But um, torch setup, you can see I got a big old cup here. I think this is a 16, yeah, GLS 16. That is a actually a very good cup. I've had a lot of good luck with that one. That is really needed for stainless welding. You need a lot of gas flow and a lot of gas coverage, so that's why you use a big cup like that. Um, kind of want to go over a couple other things real quick. We got tungsten in here. That's a 2% serrated or serrated, however you say that. I haven't tried these yet. I just bought these. What I've actually used for all my welding is the 2% lanthanated, the blue. You can see I got 332nd and some 16th. And then all the consumables, I have a bunch of different tips, a bunch of different um, gas lenses. There's some gas lenses. I got the regular big, long cups there, some smaller cups there, some lenses here. And then I think I have a couple. Yeah, I got a the old FUPA number 12. I got that and a few other ones. So um, actually, I burnt this torch. I was welding something super thick. got super hot, and it actually melted a little bit of that torch. So uh, they sent me a new one of those. But either way, a lot of different stuff you need when you're welding, especially when you're going from AC to DC. There's a lot of different things you need. Um, they say you're not supposed to run these gas lenses with AC, but I have seen people do it. I usually just throw on like a number seven cup like that on just a regular, not a gas lens, just a regular uh, lens or whatever, whatever it's called. I forget what they're even called. These ones here, you can see the gas comes out, these holes around the front there. Whereas a gas lens has that, that lens, that kind of mesh filter right there that the gas comes out of. So the gas lens is better for more coverage, but you don't need an extreme amount of coverage when you're AC welding. So either way, the welder is pretty much set up for stainless. That's the last thing I did. So I kind of want to go over and show you guys, see if I can get some arc shots of welding stainless. And I want to kind of show you, this is when I built my exhaust for the red truck over there. 
And I want to show you these welds here. This is a piece that I cut off I didn't end up using. But let's look, take a look at these welds. You can see how inconsistent they are. And it's just like a super tall bead right there. It's obviously not penetrated much. The next one is penetrated. And none of them really line up that great. But either way, it's welded on there. It hasn't broke yet. But I kind of want to show you from a few years ago welding to where I'm at now with stainless. And hoping we can do the same thing with uh, aluminum. So I got just some three inch here. I'm gonna weld this together. I'm not gonna bother with uh, filling it with gas or anything. I'm just gonna weld it. it. It should look the same on the outside, but I do kind of want to show you the inside. If you don't protect the weld on stainless, how the inside of the weld looks. So let's get this cleaned up. It's actually not too bad, really. Just clean the outside with some acetone, and we'll tack these together. We'll throw a couple beads on that. All right, we got that tacked together, you can see. So a little technique with tacking, obviously sometimes it doesn't work right there. I had a little bit too big of a gap and it burned a hole, but then I was able to get it tacked around the edge of that. But what you can do is take your torch without any fill rod or anything, get that tungsten like as close as you can without touching and just stab the pedal really quick. And it usually you get a nice quick tack. You don't get any heat into it. And it's just really simple to do without trying to hold it in place and use your other hand for a little dab of the filler rod. So that is nice to tack together. You can see it shouldn't fall apart. One thing I want to talk about real quick is gas flow. With a cup that big, you're going to need a lot more gas flow. Let's turn this up. I got a flow gauge here. So 10, 20, 30, 40 CFH. I'll hit the pedal and we'll see where that's at. So it looks about 35, about 35 CFH. That's usually what I weld about 35 to 40. If I'm doing something that really I want to make really look really good, you can bump it up a little bit more. But I want to I'm going to show you guys the difference between say like 10 or 15 and say 40 CFH. And then I'll also show you the difference between having post flow and no post flow. It makes an insane amount of difference. That is one thing I've learned with stainless is gas flow, gas coverage is absolutely key. If you don't have enough coverage, your welds are going to look like absolute trash. So let's do a couple tests. I'll show you guys, get some filler rod out. I am using, let's see, a few back here. So ER608L is what I use for stainless. So I'll just grab, this is actually just PVC I built. Put some caps on it for all my rod holding. Keep it nice and clean. Um, aluminum, that's what I usually use right there. ER4043, 16th inch. I should probably actually get some thicker stuff, maybe some 332. Actually, I am gonna order up some 332. Later on in the video, we'll try the difference between that 16th and 332nd. But either way, let's get stainless welded up. I usually, these are pretty long, these are like three feet. I usually cut these in half. They're a little easier to handle. So let's do a couple welds. The first weld I'm gonna do with full, uh, probably not full, maybe like five, six seconds of post flow at 35 CFH. I'll do a bead and then I'll turn the gas flow down to like 10 or 15. We'll do another bead and then I'll do it without post flow back up. So I'll just do a couple different tests. I'll go show you guys as we go along with it. Let's get after it.
All right, the results are in. The first one was how we usually weld, 35 CFH with like six seconds of post flow. The second one, if you saw, when I first fired up the arc, it started sparking out. That just was not near enough gas flow. It was at like 15, so I had to actually bump it up to 25 just to get it to even weld. And after I bumped it back up, it really doesn't look too much different from the first weld. But then coming down here with the post flow drop down to basically zero, you can see how burnt that weld looks. This is what happens when oxygen reaches the puddle before it completely cools down and is not molten red anymore. So you can see that I did that one. That one, that last one right there, you can see it's super undercut. I just went way too hot on it. Just to show the difference it makes when you go too hot, or just not enough post flow or not enough coverage in general. Now, I'm gonna go switch the, wherever my torch went, I'm gonna switch out the big gas cup or gas lens there for a smaller one. I'm just gonna grab like a number five or something, something small, just to show you guys the difference it makes using a, a nice gas lens. All right, there you can see the last weld right there it is with the, uh, I think that's a number five. Yeah, number five cup gas lens. So you can see at the very end, right at the end of that weld, you can see a little bit of color coming through. The rest is just terribly burnt. So that is a good look at what not enough gas is. It's almost like these other welds here with not enough post flow. I do have the post flow right now set at like five, six seconds. So that's the same amount of post flow I did here. So you can just see the difference between enough gas right there, not enough gas right there. It makes a huge difference in the appearance of the weld. And obviously it's gonna be stronger when it's welded correctly too. Let me see if I can get a shot of the inside for you. All right, you can see the inside of that weld looks extremely crappy. It's all like super hard, flaky, crusty stuff. That will actually eventually chip off. So if you do like an intake piece or something without protecting the inside of the weld like that, that eventually will go through your motor. So that is why we either fill up the inside of the pipe with the argon gas or that solar flux on like exhaust parts, solar flux works just fine. I've got the torch set up for, uh, well, I'm gonna try some aluminum. So just got a number six, this is not the gas lens. And then I, I honestly like using these shorter back caps. I don't know why I had that full length on there. You can see I got a short tungsten there. And I'm gonna try this 2% lanthanated. And then what I usually do is I just cut these new ones in half. That way I can use that short back cap. And I'm gonna see the difference between that 2% lanthanated and the 2% serrated. And we'll try that out, but first, we gotta sharpen this thing. I usually use a point about like that for stainless, um, nice and sharp, long tip. But when you do aluminum, you want more of a blunt kind of a face on there. So I'm gonna do that. I just chuck this up in the drill and then use my stone here on the bench grinder and put it this way, spin it with the drill and it cuts really quick, sharpens up really nice. So let's get this ground up. We'll get some aluminum out. I got some rod here. Like I said, this is 16th and I will, I'm gonna order up some bigger stuff, but it's all I got right now, so that's what we're gonna use. All right, that's what we got for a grind. I know a lot of people are confused, and I honestly am too, with balling the tip for aluminum. I guess with these inverter machines, you really don't need to. They, a lot of people say just to use a tip or a grind like that, but the older transformer machines, you 100% you have to ball the tungsten. But with these inverters, I guess it kind of just balls itself. So let's grab some scrap aluminum. I just got some junk back here. I usually do my practice test on this old dirt bike. 
uh, crankcase half. So you got some welds there. So I'm gonna get started on that, do some test welds, and then I'll see what else kind of material I have to do some actual testing on. All right, did some welding there. Turned out okay, I guess. This is just a old cast case that's probably got a lot of oil in it and you can see all the porosity in the welds. But nonetheless, got a few welds down, so I'm gonna clean up these. I know those are a lot cleaner. Probably weld a lot better. I did swap out for that serrated or whatever, the gray uh, tungsten on that lower one there. And for some reason, that one turned out a lot dirtier. I'm not sure exactly why, but I'm gonna get on some clean material and actually do a little more testing just to see what it does and see the difference between the two tungstens. All right guys, got a bunch of welds down. These are the first little short ones I did here. And then I kind of flipped it over here and ran along that. Do some longer welds here. So you can see at the top of some of them, right where I was starting now, is kind of some yellowish powder along with some black porosity. That is when, I don't know how, I, I never dipped the uh, filler metal or anything into the tungsten, but every once in a while, it would start doing that and I would have to grind it and it was, you know, pretty dirty like that. I'm not sure how it's getting contaminated, but once you clean it up, you get a nice, fresh, you know, clean start like that. And actually, a lot of these wells turned out really nice. I'm actually uh, pretty happy with a lot of these beads. And especially with my arm not being able to move it 100%, it is a little awkward to, uh, to uh, weld. So pretty happy with that. I did order some 332 rod. I have some, uh, I think, eighth inch aluminum plate I'm gonna cut some up and we'll do some different configurations, do some outside corner, inside corner, T-welds, lap joints, that kind of stuff. Try out the different rods. I didn't really notice any difference with the two different tungstens. I have the ser seriated in there and then this is the lanthanated. I didn't notice really any difference at all. So nothing to write home about there, but once we get that new 332nd rod in, I want to uh, do some more testing. Well guys, I was just doing some editing on this video and I realized all my arc shots, all my shots of welding turned out like absolute crap. What I tried to do is go through a different helmet on my camera just so I could get a better close up shot. It didn't end up working out very well. So I'm gonna try a few different things, try to get some better shots for you, just do a little more welding. And then, like I said, once that new rod comes in, I wanna get some plate cut up and do some other configurations like some lap joints, some inside corner, outside corner, all that good stuff. But for now, let's see if we can get the camera dialed in and get some decent shots.
All right, we got some more beads down. Hopefully that footage turned out better. It's kind of actually hard, it's so shiny to show the bees. I guess you can see it there. Turned out pretty good. So I did cut up a bunch of plate, but I do want to wait till I get my 332 rod before I start messing around with that. So once we get the rod in, I feel like that's going to help a lot because when I'm having, what I'm having to do with these is actually add to get a decent bead instead of just kind of flush with the material to get actually a raised bead. I'm actually having to throw dab and leave the, the filler in there for quite a while just to get a bead. So I think the 332 would definitely help get a, a more of a raised bead. A lot of these are kind of almost like flush with the uh, material. So and there's not a whole lot of filler in those. So once we get 332, we'll start welding that, do some tests on that, see what we can do. One thing I did learn here is I cranked that up for just for test, but I was about 120 hertz on the AC frequency. AC balance on something clean, you can really, I, I even turned it all the way down to, I don't know, whatever that is, less than 20%. And it still welded pretty good, but I was welding kind of maybe like 25, 30%, in between 20 and 35. You crank it up too high, you get a lot more cleaning action, but it doesn't weld that great. So on something clean, you can actually have that down quite a bit. All right, guys, we've got some 332 rod. This is the same uh, 4043. So I'm gonna start with uh, welding some of this together. Also, you guys probably noticed I uh, had my other tank was almost empty. So when you got a fresh tank of argon, we are set up and ready to go. So I'm just gonna start welding this stuff together, just different joints. We'll do some T joints, some inside corner, outside corner, probably do a lap joint like that. Maybe a butt joint, I don't know. We'll just weld some stuff together. I want to get as much practice in as I can. Try to master the art of AC TIG welding. Well, we got this thing all welded out, my little uh, test piece contraption. Some of these turned out really good, some not so good. I'm not trying to make excuses, but some of these joints like this one here was kind of a pain actually, kind of hurt my arm to get down in there over this top. And that's kind of why it's so inconsistent. You can see, it doesn't look that great. But some of these other ones, outside corners, uh, maybe a little bit too tall. Maybe I could have added a little bit more heat to that to kind of uh, sink that weld into the joint. But some of these, like these flat ones here, I'm actually pretty happy with that. Some of those look really good. This thing's still super hot, so let's flip it over. A few more here, inside corner. That one turned out pretty good. You can see I did do a lot of start and stops. So I was just adjusting the machine, figuring out what works best for each joint. You can see that outside corner actually looks Pretty decent there, so but we're getting somewhere with this. It's not looking uh, absolutely beautiful, but definitely helping, especially this rod. This definitely helped a lot having a 332nd. You don't have to hold the rod in the puddle as long. You just kind of dab it like you usually would with a 16th. I was having to hold it in, hold it in each dab, and you burn through the rod a lot faster. This seemed to help a lot, so I would definitely recommend 332 over 16th even on thinner stuff this is eighth inch but even on this stuff here i actually did a bead let me see if i can find it this one here this is with the uh 332 you can see how much better that looks than these these are all like i said almost kind of flush with the uh pipe there or with the tube this one is you know raised up like it should be nice bead right there so i definitely say 332 helps quite a bit. Well, I'm wrap this one up here, guys. I know this video is getting a little bit long. 
I am definitely starting to feel a little bit more confident with a welding aluminum. Still not really good at it, obviously. I still got a long ways to go to be able to get good, especially when you're doing something like a cast aluminum repair. Some of those can be extremely tricky just because the cast aluminum is pretty porous and you can actually have oil inside of the aluminum which makes it a pain in the ass to weld. But this clean aluminum plate that we just welded is actually pretty clean and it welded really good. So happy with the progress so far. If you welders out there have any tips for me, feel free to drop a comment. I'm always happy to look at feedback. Drop a comment down below if you have any questions. Hope this helps you guys out. I'm not trying to say I'm a professional I'm trying to teach you how to weld. I just kind of want to bring you along the journey of learning how to weld. Yes, I have done it before, but I'm not very good at it. So trying to get better. And I figured we could learn this together. Well, that's it guys. Go smash that thumbs up button, comment, subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.